folks. Uh, just coming to you with another Nugget segment today. And our question today is, how do I love my neighbor well during this season with COVID-19? And so definitely social distancing has made it unique. Uh, and we've got to get a little bit creative in how we love our neighbor in the season. But I also think it can be a blessing because we have to think outside the box of what we would normally do. And in that moment, if we're sensitive to God's spirit and we're willing to listen, I think God can really use it to advance the gospel and to encourage our brothers and sisters. And so uh, just to, as a way to start, Mark chapter uh, 12, verses 30 and 31 says this, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second commandment is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. These are the words of Jesus. And so loving our neighbor well is not just kind of a fun Christian thing to do. It's actually a charge by the Lord. And so uh, we want to definitely look at ways to do that. Um, I'm going to give you a couple points on this. I'm going to give you four points on this. So if you're a note taker, grab your pen and a piece of paper out. Uh, or if you have a good memory, uh, you are not like me. So uh, here's the first point. Number one, pray. Um, here's what Oswald Chambers, uh, the great Oswald Chambers, said in regards to prayer. We tend to use prayer as a last resort, but God wants it to be our first line of defense. We pray when there's nothing else that we can do, but God wants us to pray before we do anything at all. And I think... Uh, as we, um, we navigate these new waters in this new season, I think prayer is just an absolute vital uh, discipline that we've got to learn. I would say pray regularly. Pray with your kids. Uh, pray for a cure to this virus. Um, pray for the first responders and the doctors. Pray for sensitivity to God's spirit uh, in how to respond to this crisis. And so uh, as we pray, uh, the second point on prayer that I would say the sub point would be pray with people. That's pray with people. Uh, there's something unique that happens when we pray uh, with others. Uh, God tends to send a peace on them uh, that the, what the Bible says transcends all understanding. And I think as we pray with people, we let them know that we're praying for them. We actively uh, contact them and ask how we can pray for them or shoot them a text. Uh, then we follow through with that. God brings a peace um, that is just unexplainable, and that can really plant seeds of faith in others, whether it's a believer or whether it's somebody who doesn't know Jesus. It's a way we can minister to others. Number two, I would say uh, utilize your phone and social media um, to minister to one another. And so we've got this great gift, right? Social media, which can often be uh, a terrible thing, uh, can often be abused, but man, it is a great tool. And God has given you, whether you have a rotary phone or whether you have a smartphone or a dumb phone, uh, you can go ahead and pick it up and you can just call someone. Uh, so I'd say check on one another, um, check in with one another. I heard a kind of a, a heartbreaking story last week about somebody who um, weekly would visit somebody in the elderly home, and in this season, they're banned from doing that, and their heart was just breaking uh, for this woman who would be alone. It was the only thing that she really looked forward to day to day, and now they've got to do that over the phone, uh, and so we want to just be mindful that there are people out there that are lonely, and so shoot people a call, encourage one another, check on one another, use every opportunity you have to do that. Uh, another one, I would say while you're out and about at the store, nab something and drop it off on somebody's uh, front porch. Uh, maybe toilet paper, depending on which community you live in. Uh, but, you know, I had somebody stop in this past week and they dropped off 13 bags of coffee and said, hey, I know you're going to need coffee while, you, while you're here uh, and, and uh, while well, you're stuck at church and stuck at home. And so just want to provide coffee for you and share as you have opportunity. And I've been able to pass several of those bags out. Um, but what a neat opportunity it is when we're at the store and we think of, you know, maybe it's somebody's favorite candy bar. And we pick it up and we just leave it on somebody's porch and say, hey, was thinking about you, sending you a candy bar. And so uh, that's an opportunity. If you're wondering, I like Reese's Pieces. And so uh, just an opportunity um, for you to, you know, if you're driving by, you know, my address. Um, number three, uh, this is probably one of the uh, more of a sobering thought, but definitely probably the most important out of all four of these um, is remembering that. Domestic abuse is real. Um, you think about this season, you've now taken uh, so many families that are volatile uh, and just have a bad chemistry makeup, and you've added stress, you've added financial pressure, you've added the doors are shut, and that is just a bad recipe. So if there's somebody in your circle of influence that you know could be at risk for that, check in. 
Uh, if there's a group of kids that you know could be in a home where maybe uh, you mom or dad aren't home that often and it's really not a good situation, uh, check in on them. Uh, if you know a woman who's in a spot where uh, she may not be in the safest spot, uh, be the person that is going to go forward and check in. You may be their only lifeline in this season, and quite honestly, there's going to be um, there's going to be less interaction with other people, so people uh, may be able to stay under the radar with this. We want to just be forward and be gentle and be loving, but also unashamedly just ask how people are doing. Um, number four, uh, look for service opportunities in our community. Um, you know, God may call you to do uh, things that you normally wouldn't, uh, to minister to one another. God may call you uh, to some neat ministry opportunities, and I'm going to encourage you to take advantage of those. That doesn't mean throw off all, uh, you know, all the uh, encouragements that our community has given us to make ourselves safe, uh, but that also means take precaution. Uh, but as you're taking precaution, man, we are the light in a dark place, and if you don't go out there and shine your light, who will? Uh, I read an article about Samaritan's Purse and how those workers are going out, not just in the U.S., but throughout the world, and they are going forward, and they are spreading the gospel with their hands and with their feet, and yes, they're taking precautions, but they're also out there, um, and I would encourage you to be, again, prayerful, be mindful, be sensitive to God's Spirit, be safe, but also be willing to um, maybe get out of your comfort zone a little bit to minister. Um, Molly and I just got a email yesterday from a family, uh, a young family with three young kids, and they are in Kenya, and they are medical missionaries. And although the government has urged them to come back to the U.S., they realize that there's a calling on their life and that they are not just tourists there, that they are missionaries, and they are, are staying put there. Uh, and regardless of, you know, the fact that there's very little running water that's clean, regardless of the fact that there's very little uh, medical help there, they realize that that's a mission field for them. And so I uh, would encourage you to be willing to um, step out of your comfort zone a little bit in this season to minister to one another. So love your neighbor well, church.